Hi all, my name is Kirill Stupin and I'm the lead artist at Gaijin Entertainment. Today I'm going to tell you how to create new and awesome locations using our content development kit. Our CDK allows you to create missions of any size from 2 kilometers to 128 kilometers. The minimum size is also not a set limit. It's just that two kilometers is about the minimum size to comfortably deploy tanks on. For planes, two kilometers can be too small a space to even take off and gain a decent height. So, we recommend that you stick to more or less standard sizes, 16 by 16 kilometers, as a minimum. This is enough to have a great time, both in the air and on the ground. The editor allows you to recreate any landscape on our planet. And that's not all. It also has the ability to create landscapes of various types, from completely flat plains to high mountains with peaks, plateaus and snow caps. We have a diverse bunch of tools to render various types of landscapes. You can transplant various assets along splines, and not just manually. You can also create complicated rules to automatically generate a natural-looking landscape. For example, you can create a grove, which bushes will always grow next to, framed by beautiful green grass. All that's left to do then is to create some kind of pond, which reeds will grow around and and voila, the meadow outside your house just appeared in our game. Thanks to the fact that you can make your own assets, you can make something personal, absolutely unique and guaranteed not to exist on the planet. Maybe some will want to fly above the lifeless deserts of Mars in an excellent German Messerschmitt. Our game already contains a sizable collection of diverse locations, from wintry European fields to the sunny jungles of tropical islands. But there's nothing to stop you making your own version of what's already there, or making something completely new and different, which we haven't gotten around to yet for one reason or another. Let me tell you a bit about the last location I made as an example, Kursk. We started with the premise that this rather important conflict took place near the Red October village on the other side of the river. As such, this landscape was selected for our tank battles to take place on. We took a map of the hills, looked at photographs, and looked at how the fields have changed. Because over the last 60 years, some land has fallen into the river here and there, as the river has eroded its banks. Accordingly, the character of the river changes. So, when you're recreating events that happened so long ago, it's very important to pay attention to photographs of that time, if you can find them. This task is made easier by the fact that the majority of countries took aerial photographs of fields of battle. This made life easier for ground troops, who could know where they were going, and for bombers, who could know where to bomb. As a rule, all these photographs can be found online and are readily available. If you have an aerial photograph with sizes indicated, that will make your life even easier. Since in comparing it with a modern map, you can see which changes have taken place and introduce them to your location to make it look like a truly historically accurate part of the landscape. Apart from a landscape, you also need objects to place on it, to lend it historical authenticity. Fences, houses, wells and all kinds of other interesting things. You can model all these items in any editor you like and import them into our game. Our asset placement rules come in many convenient forms. You can place objects along splines, for example along curves you draw in the editor. You can place them simply according to rules you write in a BLK file. For example, a simple form of programming. And you can place objects by hand, which is especially necessary when you're building a tank location, since the positioning of objects in such locations is important down to the meter, as this defines whether or not it's possible to hide behind the object. In these cases, you can control the position of an object right from the editor, manually, by carefully moving it or turning it until you have set it how you want it. Now I'll show you how to use our location editor to edit our locations. For example, we have an island that comes with the CDK. The map is demonstrative in that it shows all the capabilities available in the editor. Firstly, 
Here we have a 3D ocean with waves. Here's a forest, fields, roads, villages, and an aerodrome. So, what can we do in our editor? Firstly, we have the terraforming tool, i.e. the landscaping tool. Using these brushes here, we can edit our landscape in any way we like. For example, we have brushes that create mountains, and a brush which, in contrast, digs ravines. We have a brush to copy landscape sections, which moves the landscape from where you clicked with the brush to where you take the mouse pointer. All our brushes have additional functions, which become available when you press the tab key. This is opacity, i.e. impact, hardness, i.e. smoothness of angles, and spacing, i.e. the distance between samples, which as a rule can be left as it is. We also have masks here which you can use. These are particularly important for the first two brushes, which incidentally you can switch between using the 1, 2, 3, and 4 keys. Masks are important when using them, because you can, for example, create mountains using the peak mask or create flatter mountains using the plateau mask. We also have a brush which we can use to just smooth all this out and create the hills we need. We also have such terraforming tools as the spline and polygon. If we turn off the anchoring to allow our cursor to move freely around the location, we can draw a spline, i.e a curve. Then, in its properties, we can set it to change the map height. In the map height renderer properties, we can set it up to show us the final result after the modifier is set. Then, as we can see, the spline draws a hill up beneath itself. Naturally, we can do it the opposite and make a ravine in the same way. If you need to make a large flat surface, you're better off using the polygon instead of the spline. The polygon is the same as the spline, but closed. You draw a polygon, close it, and indicate that it should modify the map height. This is the smoothing radius, and this is the distance from the polygon, or spline itself, to the end of the modified area. The result is a level and flat surface on which you may need to build an aerodrome or something else of that kind. Apart from terraforming tools, we also have tools to create all kinds of different buildings, plants, and so forth. Let's begin by placing something manually, i.e. just by creating a new asset. For example, we have this oil derrick here. As you can see, we can move it however we like. We can resize it if we want. It doesn't have to be proportionate. We can make it disproportionate if we need to. And naturally, we can turn it around. Apart from that, we have splines which draw something on the landscape. For example, we have two road splines. As we can see, the road spline not only draws the road, but also places those little bushes along its length, which often sprout by the roadside. The main tool we use to fill in our large locations is, of course, the land class tool. Since the spline isn't as large, and manually placing objects obviously takes a very long time. That's why we have so-called land classes, textures containing objects placed in pre-drawn areas. They're right here, in the script folder. The way it's laid is defined right here in properties, i.e., here it's laid only according to a mask, but a forest, for example, is laid not only according to a mask, but also according to a few rules, i.e., height and angle rules. The contents of the land class are displayed right here. We have here, for example, a land class called Shore, which draws sand. If I use it somewhere around here, we'll get a sandy area, something like a desert. So, there are the basic tools used when working with our editor. After you've introduced the changes you want to this location, redrawn it, rearranged the objects how you like them, changed the landscape, all you have to do is export it. Export to game. All the settings here are right, turned on, because we're simply exporting it. By default, it should export into the Levels folder. 
we click the Save button. It already exists, because I already saved it. But I'll overwrite it now. Exporting the level might not be a particularly fast process if you made a really big location. It could take a little longer, but when it's done, when the level export finishes, you can close the editor and load up the game itself. We already have a mission in the game for testing locations. It's in the user missions and is called Test Mission for Sample Location. We just launch it, and after it loads, like on a normal test flight mission, we arrive at the location we created. And there you have it. All the basic functions you need to create new locations. As you can see, all of this is pretty simple. Aspire, create new locations, save them and upload them to War Thunder Live so that other players can rate them.